Hey everybody, so this is gonna be a special Filler Week video. Now, one thing that transcends all cultures and boundaries in this world is music, and one genre that has been surprisingly successful globally is metal. Now, growing up, I always kinda of thought that metal was like dark, scary, evil music, and although some metal bands do get kinda of dark, not all of it is, and there are so many different types of metal. But the one thing that unites them is the music style. Highly amplified distortion, extended guitar solos, emphatic beats, and overall loudness. Now, I personally like me some metal, but I am by no means a metal head or a metal expert. However, I do know a guy, and I think you know him, my music go-to guy, Keith. Yay! What's up, y'all? So now, Keith, uh, you like all different types of music, not just metal, right? Yeah, I do. You know, anything from jazz, blues, uh, classical music. Bit of my musical background history. Uh, I started playing bass when I was 14 years old, and I started immediately started studying with a guy named Dave LaRue. So, would you consider yourself a metal expert, or at least a metal connoisseur? I have been listening to metal bands since I was in eighth grade, so I think I know a thing or two about it. You can, hold, do, you can hold your ground. I can hold my own ground. Keith, just kind of explain, what is metal music? How did it start? Late 60s, early 70s. Uh, it started off like from bands from like the UK, like you know, Deep Purple, Black Sabbath, a band called UFO with Michael Schenker and stuff like that. Tony Iommi, the guitar player of Black Sabbath, he was working on some machine and his hand got caught. Imagine losing these two. In order for him to continue to play, he tuned down his guitar, which also helped develop the, the heavy, heavy, heavier sound. He was kind of a pioneer in a way. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Keith, why do you think so many people across the world just like metal music? It's basically an escape from reality, you mm. know, for some people. Um, and it's a great way to, you know, feel a sense of community. All right, cool. So we're going to get into this, talking about metal around the world. But before we do, for the first time, Geography Now has been doubly sponsored in one week. That's why we're doing this video. As you know, we really only prefer to work with geography or education based sponsors, and it is my honor to mention that Skillshare has said they wanted to work with us again. For those of you who don't know, Skillshare is a website where you can learn skills. Pretty simple. There are over 25,000 classes you can take in all fields of expertise in academia, and since today's episode is on music, they actually teach music on Skillshare as well. Like the guitar, drums, violin, and even Keith's trademark instrument, the bass, for less than $10 a month, and premium membership gives you unlimited access to classes so you can join the perfect community. And the first people to sign up with the link in the description of this you'll video get will get it. You'll get a two free month trial. Do it. Yeah. Do it! Thank you, Keith. So thank you, Skillshare. All right, so little disclaimer. There are some bands that we will talk about that are not necessarily metal bands. Um, and also, there is a lot of bands in the great big planet Earth, so we can't cover all of them. And if you want to mention any other bands, write them in the comments. And also, another thing is, too, if you can and if you like the band's record, buy it. Right. <laughs> Support the artist. That's my own little disclaimer. <laughs> Pirating is bad. All right, let's start off with the first continent, our home continent, North America. All right, so obviously in North America, the USA and Canada lead the charts with the most metal bands and metal per capita. Surprisingly though, Mexico also holds their ground with metal bands as well. It's actually kind of a growing Latin metal movement going on right now. Definitely. Some very prominent metal bands that have come out of North America have been bands such as Metallica, Megadeth, Pantera. Didn't like hair metal start in the West Coast, like California or something like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, Van Halen. And, and Motley Crue and yeah, I mean bands like Rat and uh, Poison and all that stuff that all started right here on the Sunset Strip. So by the way, um, such prominent Canadian bands would be Three Inches of Blood, Gore Guts, Nickelback is also <laughs> oh, one of the greatest metal bands who have ever existed. <laughs> Uh, glad I didn't say that. Now, South America. So, as far as South America is concerned, uh, Brazil and Argentina are the powerhouses that... They, they lead the charts. Right, well, considering, you know, got a great-grandmother that was born in Rio de Janeiro. Proud Portuguese family history. Um, <laughs> starting off with Christian. Christian's awesome. Definitely should check him out. Also, Sepultura is a massive band from Brazil. Now, Argentina is a little interesting. From my research, uh, this guy, Popple from the band Riff. He was kind of like the predecessor to what would later become Argentine metal. Chile has Dorso, and then Kraken is also probably one of the most well-known bands
friends out of Colombia. There's a really very, 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 very popular music festival in Brazil. It's called Rock in Rio. And hundreds of thousands of Brazilians show up. There's always great bands. Iron Maiden played it one year. You know what's funny? Because it's like, yeah, Brazil, you think it's just like samba and like a little bossa nova, but no, they got a huge metal movement going on. And now we go across the sea to Europe. Keith, if you could describe the difference between European metal versus American metal, what would you say? Uh, they actually have Viking blood, so they're <laughs> not faking at all. <laughs> <laughs> so Germany actually has the most metal bands. Uh, come on, everybody knows Rammstein. Mm -hmm. Or Rammstein. Rammstein. Uh, nonetheless, Nordic countries also top having the most uh, metal bands per capita, hence my very first episode, which I was in. Fun story, yeah, when I first met Keith, I didn't know how he was gonna be on the show. But then I realized there was a part in the script where I said, all the other Nordic countries are like, la, 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 la. while Finland is like, <laughs> I'm like, Keith, can you do a metal growl? <laughs> That was his first line, and since then I was like, this guy has to be on the show. <laughs> yeah, Finland has over 630 per million inhabitants, which is more than anywhere else in the world for metal band. Everywhere you go, cafes, shops, stores, restaurants, metal is playing. There was even a metal band from Finland that won Eurovision, Lordy. Ch Children of Bodom, one of my most listened to metal bands of ninth grade. And uh, Finland is also home to my favorite metal band of all time, Apocalyptica. They use electric cellos. I think that's awesome. Apocalyptic is sick. Oh, they, they are talented. Mashuga is also a very uh, prominent uh, Scandinavian metal band. Opeth. And uh, surprisingly, Greece has quite a growing metal scene. They are the largest market in the Balkans and South Europe. Uh, Europeans take metal pretty seriously. It's it's very strong in Europe. Definitely. Sure. And now we go to East and South Asia. So in Asia, Japan is the number one metal country. When you leave North America and uh, uh, Europe they bring they tend to bring in more traditional instruments into metal um, and it sounds really cool Yeah, and there's yeah. a bunch of cool bands that do that stuff uh, one that I know of they're not completely metal But they do some metal songs is Wagaki band. They use the Japanese shamisen in a lot of their music Maximum the hormone from Japan. <laughs> you introduced me to that. Yeah, either way. It's a great band check out their music videos They got some trippy stuff going on. I might not be the biggest fan of baby metal But the backing band for baby metal is full of extreme extremely talented musicians. Malaysia and Indonesia have been embracing metal for a long time now and it gets really cool. The Indonesian president, he is actually a huge fan of metal and also I know metal bands such as Lamb of God and Megadeth, whenever they tour Indonesia, they personally invite him to come to all the shows. That's kind of a cool thing, I the think. president of Indonesia. Indonesia. Although it's still kind of frowned upon to play metal in Indonesia, that has not stopped a bunch of bands. And then you can't forget about V.O.B. who is led by three schoolgirls and they wear hijabs. Hijabi metal. Go figure. Anybody's allowed. India also has a very massive metal scene. So you have bands like Sky Harbor, which are very popular. Bloody Wood. And even though she's not a metal musician, she does a lot of metal covers. I'm a huge fan of Archie J. She is the first female professional bagpiper in all of India. And even though it's not as prevalent, I really want to mention Mongolian metal. It's really cool because sometimes they mix their traditional overtone throat singing with metal and it fuses so well. For example, here is The Who. And now the Middle East. Because many of the countries adhere to a stricter form of Islamic law, many metal bands have trouble kind of performing. It's kind of hard to be a metal musician and many times they have to perform underground. So there's also been uh, metal bands in the Middle East who have been arrested and punished uh, for playing this particular style of music. In Saudi Arabia, there's actually a band called Al Namrud. They have to go completely undercover and anonymous and that's just kind of how they perpetuate their music through anonymity so that the government doesn't know who they are. In fact, there was a very popular band called Arasa Kauda from Iraq. They actually had to flee Iraq during all the crazy stuff that happened recently and now they are refugees in the US. And today, Israel and Lebanon are the lead metal scene countries in the Middle East. It's a lot easier to play in these two countries. And uh, the Emirates and Bahrain have their own bands that play freely as well. There's a band from Dubai called Aramaic. They mix like Assyrio Babylonian sounds to their songs as well. And what's really cool, there's another band called Crescent. They actually 
actually made a song with some lyrics that are actually in real spoken ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. First band to ever do that. I, I, I hope at one at some point it can be there can be a light shined on it and people can go out and perform their music that they want to play. And now Africa. Africa is kind of like the last frontier. There's a lot of metal bands that are now sprouting up. Specifically in South Africa, there's a huge black metal scene. Mm. In the southern part, South Africa is the largest market. In Northern Africa, Morocco and Tunisia and Egypt are the largest markets. Okay, such bands from South Africa would include Juggernaut Seether, which is actually a popular band here in the States. Yeah. Funny thing is, there is a fast growing community in Botswana as well. Bands like Skin Flint, Overthrust, Crack Dust. And it's, it's funny because the fans also, they have this weird like cowboy metal look to them. They wear like the, the hats and everything. Now there's a cool one, Tinariwen from Mali and Algeria. They play metal with traditional Berber instruments. And All right, and finally, we have Oceania slash basically Australia and New Zealand. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so basically, because they have close ties to Europe and the Americas, no, it's no surprise that metal kind of grew here as well. As far, as far as Australia goes, you have bands like ACDC. If you want to consider them a metal band, they're more of like a rock band, but hey, whatever. Probably one of the biggest things to come out of but, Australia. So. Right. Uh, Parkway Drive, 12 Foot Ninja, Pliny, who's a amazing instrumental guitarist and you introduced me to him he's yeah. really talented now I asked a lot of you guys the Kiwi subscribers to mention some Kiwi bands from New Zealand some of you guys mentioned things like Ulcerate Diocletian and almost every single one of you mentioned alien weaponry and how they're very unique because they actually speak the Maori language in their songs cool. isn't the world awesome are my eyes you green you have like hazel eyes so that was all the inhabited continents before we end this video Keith top band go okay so my favorite bands of all time. They're not all metal bands, by the time. way. Time. Well, I wouldn't say all of all time. I would say for basically today. The top bands that I listen to that I'm listening that's on rotation right now. Uh, the Police, Pink Floyd, uh, Led Zeppelin, Opeth, Pliny, uh, Monuments, Return of Forever, the Maha Vishnu Orchestra. <laughs> Iron Maiden, and then we're gonna just do 10 because I can go on forever. Right. But my all time, all time favorite band ever in the existence of mankind, the huge, amazing <laughs> band would be Rush. Rush. Yeah, Rush is my all time favorite band. A lot, if, if you listen through their whole entire discography, they've always been evolving as a band. They've always used, brought in new technologies into their music. But yeah, to be a band also for 40 years, be able to go out on tour, sell out arenas all across the planet and stadiums for that matter. I think they're a great band. Any last things you wanna say? What do you think the world needs to know about metal? It's just not even just beyond metal. I would say it's just, this just goes for listening to music in general, all music. Um, you know, always keep your ears open. You know, don't be afraid to listen to new things because your friends thinks a certain style of music might be dumb or whatever. Develop your own personal taste. Don't let other people tell you what and what not to listen to. There is validity in all forms of music and all forms of self-expression. Great words. <laughs> Thanks guys. Hope you have a good one. Stay cool. Stay tuned.